This is Avion, Atypical Voices in Our Time, the official podcast of Chemistry Productions. That's spelled K3MISTRY Productions, a media education company. <clears throat> so go a little sign like this. That's Avion. What's going on, everyone? This is the ABI Podcast. I'm Jay Stokes, joined by Koya and Jay Random. Koya is actually looking kind of <laughs> not in the moment. <laughs> yo, yo, what's I going on, up, everybody? Though. Hey guys. Yeah. So let's get things started with today. The first topic I wanted to highlight was this Aunt Jemima thing. So people <laughs> are just now discovering Aunt Jemima oh, yeah. was based off a racial stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> Me, today years old. Oh God. And I love Aunt Jemima. It's so good. It I feel is bad terrible. about supporting that, but it's good though. I like Aunt Jemima. It's not just Aunt Jemima. It's also Uncle Ben's and Butterworth too. Oh, that no. they're now Miss Butterworth too. Yes, Ms. I didn't know about Butterworth. I didn't yes, know about Butterworth and yeah. um and Uncle Ben's as terrible. well. They're now changing uh, exactly. the Uncle logos. Ben's and cream of wheat. They want oh, cream of wheat nice. to be done with that too. All of them. They want them done with wheat. I forgot about cream of wheat. Yes. Oh my god! The black man up there cheesing with the chef hat. Oh, <laughs> see, I don't eat cream of wheat. So that's probably why he got away Me with neither, it. Me neither, but long time. they brought it up. <laughs> So oh, yeah, basically what's to. happening is these logos are going to be changing. Aunt Jemima, yes. they're going to be taking away the person, the black lady that's on the bottles of syrup. So the syrup's not that going anywhere, but they're taking away. That they didn't that did pay, it. and they used her what face. Mean? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, they didn't the lady pay the lady. The lady face it is, Sarah Green or something like that. So, so yeah. No, they used her face. She's the point. face of Aunt Jemima, but they ain't pay her nothing for it. They ain't paying oh, enough. I didn't even know that. Oh yeah. well, well that, that makes sense though. That makes yeah, that sense. makes sense. That's not okay. Like it's 2020. You ain't think maybe by even like 1995 to give her the money. It's probably been a little while. Like, and she probably gone. Is, yeah, that is true. But I know her family has been alive forever. Like, how did you think not to pay her? Yeah, for 130 years. For 130 years, they had that face. For 130 yeah, years, they had the face, Aunt Jemima. Yeah, no, since you're lying. 19, you're not that old. since 1890. Since 1890. That's why it's so good. That's such a good recipe. So, whatever they use. 1890, <laughs> they use that so face. Good. And she didn't get no I like royalties. The syrup and the pancakes. I'm not going to hold you, but if they're being racist, I won't use it. I don't care. I'll use Hungry Jacks or Bisquick or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so the it. Aunt Jemima picture is from a minstrel show performer that reportedly sang songs that enslaved blacks did. Yeah, that's yes. where he got the name from. But then he used right. his lady's face and then pay her. 130 years, no royalties. Somebody got to get that check cut. I can't believe Aunt Jemima <laughs> thinks it's 130 years old. I know. It's not, isn't that amazing? You know they had to change that ingredients a few times. Oh, yeah. It's mashed on the box. I'm about to go read it. I'm sure Yo. it's not how Sarah and them was because, making it back in the day. No. Used to have you her, see, like, go to the house and make pancakes and sell the boxes for him and lady. You know, them original joints was on point. You know oh, they you were. You know with some butter? <laughs> of course they were. Or some lard like they had back in the day, please. Of course. <laughs> some lard. The crispy <laughs> edges. Type of time. The crispy edges. Crispy edges yeah, is okay. no joke. Ain't nothing what? like some crispy edges. If the pancakes don't have crispy edges, please don't offer them to me. Please I don't. don't. Them. I don't want no soggy ones. <laughs> right? <laughs> like diamond style? Ugh, no. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Anything tastes like cake. Fluffy <laughs> cake with syrup. <laughs> right. I was surprised that it took so long for them to actually change the face. Unless there's an outrage behind it, no one's going to be doing anything. They're like, oh, let's just let this slide. <laughs> but no, no, now, no. since well, Black Folk is know. turning up. They're like exposing everybody. Can to Carol's daughter, like every week they're taking somebody else down. Like we're just getting exposed <laughs> to the truth. We don't go around checking who the CEOs are for every brand that we consume, you know? No, and everything is racist. Everything is racist. Is. Like this is America. <laughs> we are racist. So you know what? <laughs> this country you is built what? on racism. Like that's it. So you know what? So I'm thinking that the Redskins probably have to change their name now. This is the climate. They ain't changing nothing. Mm -mm. What? They All this time the owner. You don't think so? Nah. Mm. They ain't the changed. Nah. nah. The Redskins don't even mind being the Redskins. Shit, they don't mind. <laughs> they are not changing the breed of people. Did the Redskins change their name? Oh yes. Know? What? Football is definitely New Age slavery. Definitely New Age slavery. Yeah, like, um, I went to a game. They're so aggressive, like, in the stands towards each other. They argue with each other. You know, like, it's supposed to be fun. It's not mm -hmm. fun, especially when alcohol is involved. It's not fun at all. No, <laughs> definitely not. So I'm glad you went to sports because another topic on sports that applies to this whole Black Lives Matter big shift in the climate is Kyrie Irving 
he is actually advocating for players to sit out when the NBA resumes on July 22nd, sit out in protest. And that's been getting a lot of like back and forth. Some people are in agreement with it, notably players that aren't even playing right now. And other people are saying, no, that's not a good way to use your voice or your activism. So I just want to get both of y'all thoughts on that situation. I think it's good that he's using his voice in that way, if that's what he chooses to do. I mean, you know, it's a preference thing, but I do think that it may take away from like our point. Like you just can't use us in any way, but disrespect us in the streets and, you know, treat us like animals and stuff, but you want us to play sports for you. So I get the point. I definitely mm-hmm. get the point. I'm glad that he's standing for what he believes in. I think it's a personal preference. Some people want to get paid. So they're like, look, I'm going to do what I got to do because I want to eat. So it just depends on the person. But I stand by him doing that. That's cool. Right about now, I feel like if the NBA comes back, it's only going to distract us because I'm not even going to lie. ESPN right about now is CNN. I swear. It's, you turn on ESPN, they're talking about what's going on on CNN. So it's, Everybody it's, covers the same thing. Like, yeah, because it's nothing, celebrity yeah because it's nothing on. I believe but that you know, we do not need to have basketball. I, think I would rather it, have it this way, though, because then if not, then it would just go away and get muddied by something else that's on the air. You know, what do you mean? What do you mean? If these different channels aren't talking about this issue that's happening towards black people, then that's what you're talking about. The distraction is going to happen. Yes. Oh, yeah. Distraction will happen. If NBA comes back, I'm telling you right now, bars are opening. Restaurants as of today are allowing people to actually eat it inside. So all they need is a sport, any type of sport, and they are distracted. Once again, they have nothing to do now. If you think about it, you turn the TV, you're like, ah, oh, free. Okay, let me see what's going on. Let's see what's going on with the riots. Okay, ESPN is showing some 1972 old basketball or some boxing match. <laughs> no one cares about. You think about all these games that we actually had from at least 2001 to now. They don't even play it. They don't repeat it. So it's nothing on. So I'm either watching. Netflix or I'm watching the news and I'm like gosh man this is boring so I'm telling you right now if basketball comes back it will be a distraction so I agree with Kyrie the only problem is I just hope that everyone is doing their research meaning the NBA players because Jay Stokes like I was telling you earlier when I was listening to Stephen A he mentioned something about the agreement that the NBA made with the players and somehow if they don't play this season then it messes up. It's bigger than just the season. A lot of money will be lost from now into it's okay, whenever though. they. Everything isn't about money. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. But I do. But I feel like I don't know the the money I aspect. Love money, like, but okay, right. Okay, right. like okay. Say like okay. Say like right now. So if the NBA does not come back, they they will lose one point two billion dollars in revenue. So I deal with that. The players. So the players are saying, okay, cool, we get it. But, you know, you already took 25% of our check anyway because that we didn't play. Anyway, put it in, I can get that 25% back. I mean, if you choose, if you opt out to not play, then you should know what comes with that. Then that's fine, too. I think that's fair because, you know, business is business as well. Yeah. But, you know, if you're standing for a cause, then you're willing to take the pay cut anyway. And they make a lot of money. So hopefully you've saved and invest your money. Kyrie is in an okay position to where he could sit it out. But everybody might not be able to sit it out. Yeah, True. see, that's the problem. Kyrie makes money, so Kyrie got enough money to spare. But there's a lot of NBA players that don't have they don't money got it. to spare. Yeah, that's so, totally. I get it. That's I what I'm saying. Like, like Kyrie, if you have to play, play. Yeah. If you have see, to. See, and that's the thing. If you have to play, play. But what Stephen A was saying, and I probably could do more research, but I don't know. I don't know if we could really look at their... their I think um, he's a cool. Ooh. Oh, no, I agree. But I feel like if this can hurt their negotiation in the long run, then I think how it should work is whoever wants to play, let them play. Well, Kyrie's not even playing. So I feel like whoever don't want to play, they don't have to play. But, right. And that's how it should be. I think they yeah. should have that right. Like it shouldn't be that ownership factor there. And yeah, I think right. that's where they need to they need to figure that part out too. Like just because I, you know, I play for you, you do not own me. And I feel like a lot of the white CEOs of all those professional leagues, you know, yeah, that's how they feel. You gotta play. And that's not and okay. you know the ownership is not okay. Another thing, too, in the NBA, they are mandated. They have to stand for the national anthem. They can't kneel like it's actually in the rules that they have to stand. So a big middle finger 
to the NBA and people who don't support the cause would be for all of them to kneel during the national anthem. Then you're going to be showing me you're actually protesting if you decide to play and you do that. You know what I mean? So I wonder, can they like not come out and shoot around until after the, the, the anthem comes out? Like, can they just not show up until after the anthem or no, that's not the case? I don't know. I'm just saying if you really want to push the button, then I would say to break all those quote unquote rules that you have to follow that deal with quote unquote patriotism and respecting the flag and all that stuff. That's how listen, I feel you should. I don't make their money, so it's easy for me to say, listen, I don't care. I'm not. Listen, gonna... <laughs> with the little bit of money I make now, I still be turning up. So it doesn't matter. It Jay does Stokes. not matter. Jay Stokes, what you and I do ain't hurting nobody, man. All right? That's true. <laughs> We're in a whole little bubble. Listen, listen, listen. We do what we got to do. That's it. That's it. We do what we got to do. That's it. Five o'clock come running off. Or should I say oh, rolling to, oh. roll to the next room. But, uh, yeah, you're right. We don't have a team behind us or anything that we got to support. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like Kyrie, Dwight Howard, and whoever else, if they feel like they don't want to see, but Kyrie's not even playing. So I think Dwight Howard don't want to play. He's serious. He doesn't have to play. The only problem is I feel like there's going to be backlash for those who don't play. We got to pay attention to that because that's not fair either. Because if they don't want to play because their cause is bigger than the basketball game, then find them, don't pay them, but don't penalize them. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Because you White know, Howard's on a one million dollar, one or two million dollar contract, and he gets paid as he plays. So the White Howard, as long as he don't play, he doesn't get paid. When he plays, I'm sorry, when he plays, he gets paid. That's how his contract is. He don't have like a contract. He has a play pay as you play contract. So for him to say, I'm not really feeling this, then that's saying a lot because I mean he's only getting two million. Maybe. But that's why I said that Dwight is serious, because if he's willing to forego playing, knowing that he's on a tight rope, so to speak, then yeah. that shows me, yeah, you really bout it. Carmelo even looking at it like, uh, I don't want to play. And Carmelo, and Carmelo on his last leg in the NBA, he like, man, listen, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't this serious. Because you know Carmelo, Carmelo been playing ball for like a good three years. Right. And the thing is, I got to say this about the NBA – for as much as they talk about this, remember um, Mahmoud that I knew he was protested? Say that. Yeah, yes. that protested back in like the, I think, was it the 80s? Was it the late yes. 80s, early 90s he was protesting? Mm -hmm. Long before Trayvon Martin, before Black Lives Matter, before President Trump announced a travel ban on seven predominantly Muslim countries, there was Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, a convert to Islam who refused to acknowledge the anthem 21 years ago. As he delved deeper into his new religion, Abdul Rauf decided that participating in the national anthem was in conflict with his faith. And in March 1996, when a journalist ultimately reported on Abdul Rauf's stance, it created a firestorm. Then NBA Commissioner David Stern suspended Abdul Rauf, citing a rule that players must stand for the anthem. And he wouldn't honor the flag. And I'm just like, you know, this is a guy that actually stood by his guns. And I'm like, if the NBA is so, supposed to be such a brotherhood, they owe an apology to him for protesting back then. And they should be following his example because we've had people. And then the other guy that played, he played on the Bulls, right? Yes, yeah, he did. so on the Bulls, I remember. Craig Hodges was known for his three point shooting. He led the league twice. And in 1991, hit 19 straight in the three-point contest. But he believes making points of another kind cost him his career. When he and his championship-winning Chicago Bulls teammates visited the White House in 1992 in the aftermath of the L.A. riots, he delivered a letter to President George H.W. Bush detailing the problems plaguing the country. Hodges believes that moment of activism led to his never playing again in the NBA. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like... We've had NBA players that really did sacrifice before, and I really think the big names such as LeBron James and stuff, if they really want to do something, when it affects your dollars, then I know you're really about it. And obviously you Listen. said before, Random, that we're not in their position, but still. No, exactly. Look at Muhammad Ali. Look at Muhammad well, Ali. He sacrificed everything to stand by his principles. I respect I that man. I agree, but let me explain something to you. I cannot fault LeBron James. Why I can't fault LeBron James? Because Fred's going to love this. Because I believe that if Michael Jordan was playing, he would also play. Michael Jordan, listen, LeBron knows his window of winning a championship is so, 
small that he wouldn't care with three people on the court. He Here's playing. the problem. Here's the problem, though. LeBron made himself out to be a quote unquote activist and stuff like that. Jordan never made it. <laughs> never. Jordan never said he was like that. He was nah, like, I'm just out playing basketball. Jordan yeah, he didn't play. care. Exactly. So it's a it's a it's a difference. Let's not invoke Fred today. Um. Anyway, so on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so speaking of this Black Lives Matter stuff, yes, this is gonna be a very black show today, audience. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. We're black guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> there was another incident in Atlanta where a gentleman by the name of Rashard Brooks was actually shot in the back by police officers. He was drunk, sleeping in a Wendy's parking lot. Or was he at the Wendy's parking lot or was he at the... His drive-thru. He fell the asleep in the drive through okay. Fell asleep in the drive So the cops were called. I don't know who called the cops because this is a very dangerous time for black folk when cops are called on them right now. Anyways, the cops came over. They are having a civil conversation. During the conversation, Mr. Brooks said, I have three daughters, right? This is key. He said, I have three daughters. I'm drunk. I can walk home right now if I don't need to drive, if I can't drive. And basically, the cops said, "Okay, well, we're going to escort you to the car. So they tried to put handcuffs on him. And he started resisting arrest, started fighting over getting arrested. And two cops couldn't take this man down. And I understand where he was coming from, because during this time right now, when cops take you to the car, you don't know if you're going to come back out alive or not. That's correct. So basically, after that, he runs away from the cops and one of the cops shoots him in the back and kills him as he's running away, not posing a threat. He, the cop could have chased after him. The cop, really, they didn't have to put handcuffs on, on him in the first place. He said he would walk home drunk. They could have escorted him home. So basically, I say all that to say that the cop that shot him has now been charged with murder. But we don't know. Something? Go ahead. And it's funny because I saw this on CNN. And actually, you and I, we both saw, I'm pretty sure we all seen the same video. The funny part is the cop said that they felt threatened because he actually shot the taser at them. Right? But this is the thing. So a cop said a taser can only be shot at one once before you got to reload it. That taser that he shot at them was already shot prior. Wow. What he shot at them wasn't even a threat, number one. Number two, it wasn't even active. So the cops basically said once he fired the taser at them, they felt threatened. And this is during the tussle. This is during their yeah. tussle. No, this is during the run, though. This is during the run. If you, if, if you look at the video, he's actually like running and like pointing the taser at them, but the taser ain't working. <laughs> you go back to the video but no 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 but a taser a taser I didn't like i'm just video. saying the taser that wasn't even working number one number two it's a non-lethal weapon so how did you feel coy coy yeah. there's videos where white people are actually shooting at the cops and still get apprehended shooting. unscathed shooting yes shooting, shooting. shooting. white no. privilege which the man no. called a white blesser and lecrae said nothing Oh my goodness, we're gonna get on that in a minute. We can bring that in a minute. I just wanted to clear but I just wanted to clarify that just so people who's listening be stirring the pot. I know. I'm just saying, let's get to the team. Like, come on. Okay. But you know what? I just like to say I just want to clarify that just so just in case, you know, we get some of our haters some Yeah, of, but, but they always when say that though, that they feel so, threatened. He they're threatened yo, because he's black. He don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do mm-hmm. nothing. He, yo, he's wake up in the morning and yawn, he feel threatened. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> them saying so they was, feel threatened is a lie. That's your scapegoat. Like, that's what they always say. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, I was going to clarify that just in case, you know, just in case someone like, yeah, hey, no, you I'm left something out. Yeah, no, I'm going to Yeah, yeah, exactly. Checking so, sure everything is everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, now we get on, so now we can get on that cop and say, he deserves what he gets, the cop. Because yeah, he's Jason, charged with felony murder and yeah. aggravated yeah. assault. Yeah, yeah, he deserves it. Mm-hmm. Yes, but based off of all of this going on and this whole white privilege thing, Coy brought up a good point where she was talking about Lecrae, who is a he's he's dubbed a Christian rapper. He was having a conversation with his white pastor. Kurt I don't know if you mentioned is a it. rapper. Okay, Kurt Franklin's oh, a rapper. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Franklin's a rapper, y'all. Yes, Kirk Franklin's a rapper. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> He's the original. I'm just saying. You sing it a pop in GP. He's a good hype man, but it's okay. We <laughs> have to no. agree. We can agree to disagree. Oh my lord! <laughs> Stop was the best song I heard. Stop. Stop. <laughs> All my people say. Stop. That's what I'm saying. Stop. He was like, GP on your you whip me. Okay, see, y'all get it. Exactly. You have that Georgia first. You have yeah, that yeah, you do. You do. I you get do. it. 
Yeah, but Lecrae played himself for allowing that man to say that. Yeah, and not they saying like he yeah. They said so he was talking camera. An Atlanta pastor, and the Atlanta pastor said, instead of calling it white privilege, call it a white blessing because slavery was a blessing to white people. I'm like, huh? We miss, we understand the curse that was slavery, mm -hmm. white people do, and we say that was bad, mm -hmm. but we miss the blessing of slavery that it actually built up the framework for the world that white people live in in yes. and lived in. And so a lot of people call this white privilege. And when you say those two words, it just is like a fuse goes off for a lot of white people because they don't want somebody telling them to check their privilege. And so I know that you and I both have struggled in these days with, hey, yeah. if the phrase is the trip up, let's get over the phrase and let's get down to the heart. Sure. Let's get down to what then do you want to call it? And I think maybe a great thing for me is to call it white blessing that I'm living in the blessing of the curse that happened generationally. <laughs> what? It was not a blessing. It was like y'all over there befriended pretending to befriend people who are naturally good people. And then you yes. enslave them, you terrorize them, you torture them, abuse them, kill them, everything else. Keep them oppressed and depressed, all types of shit. No, yeah, we got all these where's light skins the walking around here now. Yeah, where's the positive part in that? Don't use the word blessing, cunt. It's ridiculous. What, yeah, it wasn't a blessing. It really wasn't. No. I ain't yeah. on that type of time. That's some bullshit. And now they're and trying to clarify it and apologize. Look. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> and uh, we're battling still in 2020. And so I appreciate y'all acknowledging the pain and the frustration that you have with what was said. Um, it's helped me process a lot as well. First of all, I want you to know I wasn't okay with it. Um, even as I sat there, I was very uncomfortable and I was processing on like, man, how do I, what do I say in light of this? Um, it's been a lot of times where, um, as I've navigated white supremacy or, or, or racial injustice, where I've just been trying to figure out, um, you know, where I wanted to lash out, honestly, in anger. And there's other moments where I've been like, all right, God, give me the grace and the wisdom on how to deal with this. And um, in that moment, I was processing like, man, how do I, what do I do? Um, I ended up having a conversation with him subsequently, you know, right after we talked. And then I talked to him again last night and um, and, and let him know my, my views and my perspectives. And obviously I, I wasn't OK with it. And we can't just be virtue signaling and doing this because it's the end thing to do to talk about race on platforms. Oh, Everybody trying to apologize now, boy. Oh, please, Lecrae. <laughs> Lecrae in the past. I don't want to hear another apology. Keep them. I'm yeah, not that's big on that. Like, Yo, hold that I'm, shit. Yo, listen, you said how you really felt. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. <laughs> and your reaction okay. was how you really felt. You felt like, okay. okay, this man said this, and I'm going to see how the backlash is. Like a if clown. the backlash was good, he would have been like, he would have said anything. I stood but by him know. and whatever, whatever. But since mm -hmm. nobody liked the, you know, how shit went down, now you want a different type of time. You should have said something right then, like speak up for us. That's yeah, why they that's... can say stuff now, because you didn't say yeah. nothing. But they be picking the right... Up. They be picking the right people, though. They pick the people that they know aren't going to say anything back. And that's also that's a problem right. that I have with... I bet with... Kirk Franklin, Kirk Franklin would never. Let him try that with Kirk Franklin and talk about slavery as a blessing. Kirk Franklin will pop out on him. That's what I'm saying. Kirk Franklin is the original gospel rapper. You know why <laughs> Kirk Franklin is no joke? Because Kirk Franklin got a, a, a front... <laughs> what, what, damn, what he got? A lace front. So I know that man. Kirk no Franklin ain't got no lace front? Yes, he do got a lace front. <laughs> Kirk Franklin got a George Jefferson. Oh my god. Yo, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not feeding this. Yo, yo, when that part, part yo, when that part start, that's what his hair that is start. not a lace front, guys. Come on. <laughs> yo, Kirk Franklin got a lace front. I'm telling you. Yo, nah. he got yo, he got Ooh. the hair plugs for men. I wouldn't need receipts on that. Yo, oh, what? Oh, oh or you okay. don't have it. Okay. You know I'm gonna show you IG right now. You know I'm gonna find it for you. Oh Frank Kirk Franklin having a lace front. Steve Harvey, yes, we know that. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got oh it. Steve Harvey shook me, though. That shook me. I didn't even know. But he was bald when he, when he took yeah. off the hair? I didn't yeah. see that coming. That really got me. I love the Steve Harvey show. They were so unprofessional, but they Very. were awesome. They were, like, amazing people to those kids, but they were unprofessional, nonetheless. Yes. <laughs> mm. But so what I wanted to business, say... Um, Yo, that show that show was a classic, though. I miss those shows. I miss those black sitcoms back in the day, man. Those were yeah. good. But what I was going to say was the problem with the the Cray situation, that's why I take issue with a lot of religious people, because 
I usually think religion is a great way, especially Christianity, is a great way to keep black people docile and make them worship white people. If you make Jesus white, and if you make all the figures in the Bible white, and we know that all of them weren't, we know they were dark, like probably blue black. If these people are made white, then the people that are following this religion are going to associate whiteness with good, with the best, with godlike qualities. And mm. I think that's why a lot of times you'll see these Christian black folk, they won't be, um, they'll be hesitant to attack a white person or hesitant to criticize yeah, a white person, especially to their face. Of course. That's my issue with there. So I'm gonna wait while Random tries to find his lace front picture because we got one more heavy topic to talk about before we end this show today. So just let me know. We can get <laughs> give it me the green light. Send that in the group chat. All right, mm -hmm. that works. Yeah, that definitely, works. definitely. Okay, so there was a 19-year-old Black Lives Matter activist from Florida. Her name was Oluwatoyin Salu, a um, black woman, and she was found dead after saying that she's been harassed or stalked by a black male individual. But after she had posted on Twitter that she was being attacked by this black male, she winds up found dead in Florida just all of a sudden. And people are trying to figure out what's happening. And this has opened up this whole issue regarding black men and black women, this gender war. It's kind of pop back up again. You have a lot of black women saying, see, black men, y'all are fighting us and y'all are harming us while this is all going on. That's why we can't depend I mean, on y'all. You know what, though? As a black woman, I'm going to say some of what they feel is like justified. Hmm. It's justified in the sense that a lot of black men don't take responsibility and accountability for things. But it could be how society set us up, too. Like, they wanted us to be broken. Not saying that That's we right. necessarily have to, like, follow the lead, but sometimes circumstances lead to the choices that we make. You know, whether it be That's financially, right. emotional, whatever the case is. So I can understand where some women come from, but there are, like, you know, bad white guys. There are bad Spanish guys, too. But I think Black women, because we're not heard, that's why we always try to use our voices and we always saying something. We always got something to say because we feel like, you know, we got to say something because people feel like they don't have to listen to us anyway. Right. And the thing follow. is... The people that I follow on my Twitter page and the people that I follow black men, they're very pro-black and they support black women and they try to protect black women at all costs. Like in the mornings, I'll see them tweet out, hey, Queens, how y'all doing? Or black women, how are you feeling today? So they check in. So there are yeah. a lot of good black men out there. I think that I you see experiences that vary. And this is not the time for us to have a gender war. This is not the time for us to have a gender war. We, we, we should never really have a gender war to begin with. We should we always should be united. To the wayside right this second. But, you know, we have to also do that with our actions, not just our words. So You're right. Like, you know, there has to be an equal amount of respect on both sides. That way we can, like, unite. Without the respect factor, you know, we have a lot to overcome. And it'll be hard to do so. Yes, sir. So right. It just starts with respect, you know? If we're respected more by our own men, then, you know, other men will have to follow suit. It shouldn't even matter what other men think. We should care I mean, about what our own thinks. It shouldn't you know matter, I mean? but I don't want a white man to think he could disrespect me because my skin is brown because he's going to have something else coming. Mm -mm. You're right. You're so right. That's what I good mean point. In that <laughs> good point. Good point. Crazy because my skin is brown. It's no. Yeah, no. we definitely have to have each other's back, uh, black men and black women. And I don't think the finger pointing is going to help because you can it's find not. you can find good and bad in both genders. You find good and bad in both. I just look at it as black men, we have to hold other black men accountable and black women, we have to hold other black think, women accountable. I think that we're just more vocal about our like disappointments with things versus like white women. You know, they'll right. be in abusive relationships and stuff like that. You won't know Ted whooping her ass. How we going to know? She ain't never going to say that. Exactly. The Mexican exactly. women, you know, they ain't saying shit to you unless you Mexican and she probably <laughs> doing whatever, whatever, you know, so everybody got their shit. I know all different types of women. So I feel right. like we're a little more vocal. Like, ah, you're not about to be putting your hands on me. You're like, we will say something because we're un we feel like we're unheard. So we just always want to say something. Yeah, Rand, have you had something to say? No, all I was gonna say was no. Um, I agree. Right about now, the the infighting is just a waste of energy. We need to stay focused on the main agenda, and that's what we're fighting for right now. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives right. Matter. We're not saying black men, women trans yeah gay we're saying black lives matter so let's Anybody that encompasses black. everyone yeah, exactly. Exactly. everybody that's black y'all yes. exactly let's just stay focused because 
the minute we start vent, uh, venturing off to the left, to the right, now we just seem like we don't have a a real true purpose. And right about now, you got the president trying to spin that off too as well. He's basically trying to say, you know, I ask these people and they don't even really know what they're protesting for. It's like, come on, man. Come on. Who did you ask, really? Did you ask mm-hmm. one of us? Because we know why we out there. So I know you didn't ask one of us. So, I mean, who you ask? One of the ops? Because of course they're going to tell you they don't know what the hell going on. Exactly. <laughs> they're opting, listen, they opt in and out. They don't know what the hell going on. They see, listen, they see a bunch of people. They're like, okay, I'm just going to follow this crowd. So I do believe that we really need to stay focused. But I do agree with Koi too when it comes to the disrespect. I think it all starts at home and it all starts at a young age. And I think we need to nip it in the bud as far as. Parents. Yeah, like it's not okay. When our to sons and daughters grow up, we can't we can't allow that. Like, you that know? shit ain't okay. And, no, exactly. And also, we have to remember as adults, the things you say around your children, they can internalize that. So yes. if you're a black woman saying black men ain't ish, then your daughter can internalize that. Yeah, or if you're a black man saying like Right, that's or if you're a black true. man saying these black women are, you know, H O E's, you know, then their yeah. black son is gonna I internalize that. Now I don't, that. Like, now, I don't yeah. really you you know how I feel about the Anglos, but I ain't never heard an Anglo say these bitches ain't shit. Right. Not like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's not how they operate. They're like, happy wife, happy life. Like, even if they're doing a whole bunch of other shit, they try to feel like... <laughs> Chopping their body like up, putting in the trunk. Foundation. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, they, they, that's the only thing about the Anglos. I'm like, all right, happy wife, happy life. I can get with that shit. But the rest of it, not want to take baths and things? Nope, I don't want that with Corey. And the same people say happy life, happy life. They're the ones you find on first 48. <laughs> okay. Everybody chopped up or shot but up. I think also, they including them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I think also, I think you and I, I think the three of us, we had a conversation about this weeks ago, probably months ago. I think also parents, definitely fathers, they shouldn't condone their kids, their sons. Like what's good for your son should be good for your daughter. That's how I feel. And what I mean by that is I see a lot of fathers they let their sons get away with certain stuff, but they treat their oh, daughters yeah, like they can't. That right there, that it's right there, is, yeah, that right there is not cool either. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like yeah. don't condone one thing for your son. It is a man's boy. world. No, it, it is, is, is but yeah, but I feel yeah, like I if we just, it's a white man's world. At, at, <laughs> oh, oh, you better know that part too. Especially yeah, but I feel like as long country. as we handle it in the house <laughs> and raise our kids a certain way, then that's only going to produce better outcomes yeah i'm not right. i mean i don't know i just feel like it is a man's world and i feel like when women say stuff they're considered bitchy versus a man saying it, it like you know it goes unnoticed like oh he's just saying how he feels or whatever you know like everything is so past that mm. which so- is not okay and now for a quick commercial break Yo, what's going on, everybody? If you like what you're hearing so far, make sure you follow us on the Chemistry Production YouTube channel. If you have any suggestions or comments on our topics, either email us on k3mistrydproduction at gmail.com or leave a comment on our YouTube channel. Peace. How many times do I have to tell you? It's Productions with an S. I wanted to read this tweet to frame the last topic that we're going to discuss for today. So this tweet, I'm going to say I want to get your thoughts, and then I'm going to go into the topic. So this tweet was from a black woman, and I actually retweeted it. I thought it was interesting. She said, the average black woman fails to realize that we are the white man's lethal weapon when it comes to the destruction of the black community. We must realize this if we want to change. So I saw Koya's eyes roll, so I want to see what both of y'all think. I was just absorbing it. I mean, I get, I guess I get it because like I said before, like I text you individually outside of the, you know, the podcast to say, I see the agenda that they're pushing on them. So, you know, black women don't have, even though we have more like fatalities delivering children, we don't have a problem actually reproducing. So Mm -hmm. if a white man gets with us, we can have a whole bunch of mixed children. So then where does the black man fall into place? So I get the agenda. It, It might be a real thing and people should just keep their eyes woke. Like I said before, like I joked about getting a white sugar daddy, but with all this shit going on, nope. Nope. <laughs> I ain't got Boy, time. We ain't, so trying, we ain't trying to we ain't trying to find you in no suitcase, man. <laughs> we trying to I'm find saying. you. Jokes <laughs> over. Jokes over, Ted. I'm good, love. So yeah. That's how I feel. So I say this because J. Cole just released a new song called Snow on the Bluff. And in this, he 
basically expresses his feelings towards a allegedly a musical artist named No Name. No Name is a black woman. No Name put out a tweet not too long ago where she was saying poor black folks all over the country are putting their bodies on the line in protest for our collective safety, our collective safety. And y'all favorite top selling rappers not even willing to put up a tweet. And so basically, J. Cole took issue with this and he released a song just saying, hey, queen, like, I understand what you're saying, but I took some issue with the tone. And instead of pretty much talking at me or talking at people who may not be as woke as you, why not try to educate us like we're children? Why not try to change how you're talking to us? Um, some lyrics from the song, he says, but it's something about the queen's tone that's bothering me. She strikes me as someone blessed enough to grow up in a conscious environment with parents that know about struggles for liberation. And in turn, they provide her with a perspective and awareness of the system and unfairness that afflicts them and the clearest understanding of what we got to do to be free. And the frustration that fills her words seems to come from the fact that most people don't see just because you woke and I'm not. That ish ain't no reason to talk like you better than me. So basically, he goes into this and he tries to say it as respectfully as he can. I took it as that, but maybe I'm biased because I'm a guy. And a lot of black women on Twitter were saying that J. Cole is a misogynist. And some, like Chance the Rapper, joined in saying that he's trying to be the tone police on black women and tell black women how to speak. So I just want to get both of y'all thoughts on J. Cole's delivery. I don't know if that's what he was trying to do, be the tone police. I don't know. I feel like nowadays men have a lot to say about women, which I find to be like really annoying. But we mm-hmm. could just add them to the list, I guess. I don't know. I'm so used to it at this point. <laughs> men have so much to say about how we dress, what we wear, our wigs, our makeup, our lashes. If you having sex for forty dollars, that's a big thing. And it's like if you're sleeping <laughs> with a girl who having sex for the forty dollars, you got bigger shit to worry about anyway. So it's like <laughs> don't you know like. I don't know. I feel like that's what men do nowadays. They're so feminine in their emotions and how to express themselves. And I'm more like into traditional things. And I feel like men should be masculine and talk less. But nowadays, these men, they got some more than women. They always got something to say about women. I'm not surprised. He can do whatever he wants. It doesn't even bother me. I think that's also partly because a lot of women, well, I'll just say feminists, have been saying that men need to be more in tune with their emotions and open up more. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're getting more of this. Maybe that could be it, or to, they were raised by single mothers, and some of them have feminine ways. I don't know. I don't know. So you know, I listened to the song again today, and I didn't really see anything he said wrong. This is why. First of all, I have a problem with Chance the Rapper saying what he said because when it's all said and done, I think once again, I never really fuck with Chance the Rapper anyway. So for him to come out and say what he said, Chance, how about you spend more time in the fucking studio making good music and sit your fucking ass down than to, you know what I'm saying, than to basically criticize J. Cole, which is a hundred times better than you. Siding with females right about now ain't gonna make them go out and buy your shit. You trash. I say that, so now I go back to J. Cole. So I feel like with J. Cole, basically, people are forgetting what he said. He's, he, from the beginning, to the end, he was big enough, I think, this particular no-name person. Can I read from. one more part? Yes. Can I read one more part to back up what you're saying? Yes. So one more part, he says, if I could make one suggestion respectfully, I would say it's more effective to treat people like children, understanding the time and love and patience that needs to grow. This change is inevitable, but ain't none of us seen this before. Therefore, we just got to learn everything as we go. So that kind of backs up your point. And that's what I'm talking about. So when it's all said and done, I look at it like what he said wasn't even bad. I don't think it was bad, number one. Number two, I don't think this is the time to be complaining about what J. Cole said because you asked J. Cole to come out with something. You asked J. Cole to say something. He said something. And then you're criticizing him. And I just feel like, once again, I have a problem with, I have a, I have a problem more with Chance the Rapper than these feminists. <laughs> I have a problem with Chance the Rapper because Chance the Rapper does not produce good music in my eyes. I think he's I think over- he's pandering. Hyped. I think he's pandering because you got a lot of black dudes nowadays that are pandering to these black feminists, black yes. female feminists, in order to he get like op. props. He's an op. 
he opts in and opts out when he wants to. I always had a problem with him when, what did he do? He did a um, show on Netflix. And the show on Netflix, he was critiquing up and coming new artists. And I'm like, dude, you don't have you don't have a solid album. The last album he came out with was an album he produced back when he was on Acid. Oh no. So it was like, dude, come on, you your body of work is trash. Like no one wanted to hear from you. That's like listen, I won't say it's bad as listening to Takashi, but shit. Takashi got more music than he does. Okay, and I don't even fuck with Takashi. Don't even mm-hmm. represent Takashi. But what I'm saying is, chance I have a problem more with you stepping out of the pocket and trying to side with something that's not really worth talking about. J. Cole came out with his album, I mean, came out with a song, and within the song, he basically was bigging this female up, or this person, no name. So I'm pretty, so I'm assuming she's a female, correct? Yeah, she's a woman, yes. Okay, okay, black so woman. she's a woman, a black woman. So at the end of the day, from the beginning to the end, I felt like he was bigging her up, saying, listen, you're smarter than me. You know, you grew up in a better environment than me. It seemed like you're woke. So if you're woke, then show me what I did wrong. That's all he's saying. I mean, how do you want him to say? Do you want him to beg it in the song? Do you want him to turn to a to an R and B song and beg it? I don't understand how he kind of delivered it any different than what he did. I, I get what you're talking about, and that's what I'm saying. Going back to this gender divide, a lot of black women took issue with this. That's part of the problem right now. We can't be focusing on J Cole, even if he says something out of pocket. Just leave it and just go away. He did follow up with tweets and said, go support No Name. She's really good in the struggle and everything. So that should count for something. But he said, I don't take back what I said. He said, he I meant what everything he said. I said. He should not take back what he said. I feel like feminists have been complaining for the longest about hip hop and how men talk. But they're the same they ones. I guarantee you. I'm about to say, they're the same ones in the club. Same one in the club. Look, you remember what um you remember what uh Chris Rock Chris said? Rock said yeah. Same one in the club. Yes, Effer in the eye. Effer in the eye. Effer in the eye. Effer in the eye. Bitch, 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 bitch. They <laughs> dancing. They, 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 they. You know what I'm saying? They doing a lot, but they got a problem in the same token. So pick a lane, seriously. Pick a lane. Yeah. And I don't feel listen like, to hip hop if you're that strongly opposed to it. Don't listen to hip hop. Yeah. And so I feel like when it's all said and done, Jay Stokes, come on, he. I personally feel like he didn't do anything wrong. And like I said, I have more of a problem with Chance trying to opt in and shit. Like, Chance, sit your ass down, man. Seriously. Come out with some music. Like, seriously, Chance. <laughs> come out with some music, man. I never forget when Chance was saying he going to donate a million dollars. I'm like, a million dollars of what? You don't have no album sales. Like, what are you donating a million dollars for your concert? <laughs> Remember two... This is, and this was like two, three years ago, I think. This dude was talking about he gonna donate a million dollars to Chicago Fund. I'm like, really? Where? Where you get money from, Chance? I may be off, but I don't know what I don't know who bumping. Ch- Listen, the same people bumping Chance bumping Eminem in the hood. Damn. So there you go. <laughs> so there you go. So there you go. And last time I checked, ain't nobody bumping Eminem in the hood. So uh... there you go. <laughs> is, Joy, is Koya back in the chat? I couldn't hear it. That's why I kept tapping my ear. Yeah, as far as I know, I don't think so. I think uh, I think the connection went off. So, yeah, listen, we could end the show. And uh, oh boy. Somebody, somebody can say bye, guys. Like, uh, you know, in fact, I know you can find, like, <laughs> bye, guys somewhere. <laughs> in, a, in an old video. Bye, guys. Koi is waving at the camera. What is it, Koi? Huh? She's waving at the camera, but I don't see her in the camera. I see her, but she's 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 been trying to talk this whole time. And I, I didn't want to cut you off and be like, oh, Koi, what? Because we're going to hear her. Yeah, I don't see her. We about to end the show anyway. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yo, listen. Everybody, seriously, go out and do what you need to do to support. Support could be protesting or doing what we're doing. You know, just talking about the issues. Because the issues are serious. So I got to say, everybody be safe. You know, coronavirus is still out here. People act like it's not, but it really is. So just be safe, man. Go out and protest. Wear your mask. If it get too hot, then leave the crowd for a minute and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and then put the mask on. Because <laughs> shit is real, man. I mean, hey, listen. Now we at the point. I don't even want to see if it's real or not. I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> so oh my that's all Lord. I got to say. Yeah, definitely do that. And remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. As the late Nipsey Hussle said regarding black issues, we've had this since this country's inception. And we have to make sure that we keep on supporting black lives, not people of color, not black and brown, black lives. I'm not saying that these other lives don't matter, but our prioritization has to be on black right now because blacks 
get ridiculed and degraded the most in this country. And I can say that with 100% certainty and 100% belief. All right, y'all. It's been real. Yes, yes. Peace, peace. It's been wonderful. So go a little sign like this. That's AVR.